Welcome to Galactic Grandmother, Heart to Heart. My name is April. My special guest today is Sorita Antaria. Sorita is coming to us from Melbourne, Australia today. She's a natural born psychic, a clairvoyant, an ET and UFO experiencer. She's an author, a teacher, and she has her own YouTube channel. Um, so Rita also has an advanced diploma in health sciences, and she's passionate about superfoods, a plant-based diet, biohacking, and neuroplasticity, which you're going to have to explain to me. <laughs> um, so wow. Rita, I'll continue on though. You've got a great bio. She, so Rita does psychic readings which i can attest to are fabulous she does kinesiology and she's got some new projects that are very exciting in the work she's making a line of teas which sound like they're really going to use plant to have a great influence on our emotional and physical well-being as well as an intensive course about activating our psychic senses so oh, oh and one more thing so Rita speaks light language which for those of you that aren't familiar is a language uh, which connects us to our higher consciousness higher dimensions and is used in different forms by different star nations so thank you thank you welcome so Rita yeah, for being you. with me I really appreciate it Thank you so much for having me. And I must say, that's probably the best introduction that I've ever had. That was, oh. yeah, amazing. <laughs> Thank you, April, for having me. It's all you. It's all you. Um, for some of my, um, I followed you for years on Facebook and, and YouTube. And for some of my audience that aren't familiar with you, um, would you mind just giving us a little background? I know you, you're a natural born psychic and that must have had um, quite an influence on your childhood. Yeah, it definitely did. So I always, as a child, you know, wished for like a guide or for someone to, to be there to kind of explain to me what was going on, which is actually the reason that I've developed um, the course that I'm working on at the moment with activating wow. the psychic sense because I didn't really have that person to show up to be like okay well you're seeing um this color it means this particular thing or you know when you see that kind of spirit it represents this I really have had to be my own guide and teach myself along the way um I have had some beautiful teachers when I was studying kinesiology um that were you know really encouraging and just getting me to share what it was that I saw and just for me to I guess not see it as a weird thing you know, to, to really trust and, and, and to support me with the gifts. So, yeah, really exciting that the course will be coming out. But for me, you know, there was that aspect of seeing and sensing spirit and being kind of switched on to the other psychic senses that it's like people ask me what it was like growing up like that. I'm like, well, I don't really know any different way, but I do remember my guide saying um, very early on in kindergarten, you know, not to sort of talk about it or, you know, I was aware of my light language back then too. And it's like, oh, wow. you know, not, not to not to talk about it, um, you know, even though I would sort of say it more privately to myself and I knew that it was activating, but it really is that we are now in a time you know, in 2022, where we can sort of talk about these things openly. So I feel like I've been sitting on so much and just waiting for other people to come to the party. And I know so much of your audience and yourself will also, you know, feel like this too, that it really is, this is the moment that we've been waiting for. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're not alone anymore. And I think that was the thing growing up was feeling very alone in having gifts and knowing that we sort of are in more of this simulated reality um, and, you know, having past life memories and different things like that and trying to work out, well, right. why are we here in this timeline? Yeah. Um, and, you know, as a child trying to make sense of why do I have visions or images of other times or remember living in times or off world situations where unconditional love was, you know, at such this fullness and height and then we're down here on earth realm. Um, I kind of liken it to coming to earth of being told, you know, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. <laughs> and then you, you show up at the hotel and it's a two star instead of the five star yeah. that, they, that they've told us about. So yeah, yeah it, it's definitely been interesting growing up as a natural clairvoyant. 
and and no one in your family was psychic then what I say is like intuition like with my mom and her um and her mother like they always sort of had my grandmother had a strong interest in you know in this mm -hmm. side of things I remember when I was a kid <clears throat> she gave me a book on supernatural which had pictures of ghosts and things and I was too scared to oh, even yeah. see that on my bookshelf as a child because for me it was like I knew that that was real and I hadn't seen and experienced it so I think she would be just blown away by what I do now um I think that would be you know intriguing to her um but yeah my dad's side of the family some of the women are also kind of sensitive as well oh, okay yeah and the yeah. DNA then yeah my my yeah. Uh, Chakta, uh, Indian grandmother, she was psychic. She saw auras and she'd tell us what oh. color she saw. And then my, my mother, she was as well. And she would talk about um, her past lives and stuff. So when mm. I had certain things happen, prophetic dreams and so forth in my childhood, it was, um, it didn't, you know, it wasn't strange to me. So oh, I feel God. fortunate that I, I picked those parents you know and that line of women in my family um, oh that's wonderful yeah with with my situation it's more I guess it's being the rainbow sheep in the family so they love and accept me for who I am which is beautiful and gorgeous mm -hmm. family I'm very very blessed but a lot of what I talked about I guess as a child and what I talk about now is in a foreign yeah. language yeah. yeah in your bio the biohacking and neuroplasticity how did you get into that and, and what kind of work do you do with that yeah so I guess with my where I started kinesiology was right before I turned 18 so I'm 42 now so I've had an interest in the brain or probably going back even since 15 or 16 years old having kinesiology done for dyslexia for myself so you know had a rewiring of my own brain done, saw how it was, you know, pre-kinesiology days, uh, managing and dealing with my own dyslexia. And what I would say is a bit of ADHD as well. And then going through that process of transformation over the two years. And, you know, we are really lucky that we live in a day and age of where there's a lot more research and study right. and different techniques and that done with the brain and neuroplasticity. So with neuroplasticity, it really is that the brain sort of more malleable and adaptable and able to change. So what I've discovered since then is there's many different people that are working with other techniques, um, zinc performance, um, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, Winifred Dorr, I think. I found out about his research in neuroplasticity to do with um, accessing uh, the cerebellum, which is the back part of the brain kind right. of our filing. He works with vestibular balance to um, not only balance the eye mode, similar to what we would in kinesiology, but he helps to um, create new cortical sickness in the brain, which means that, you know, our um, mental capacity when it comes to reading, writing, language and communication mm -hmm. is a lot stronger. And then I came across uh, the work of my very good friend, Dr. Lana Moreau, who's, um, there's an episode on my YouTube channel for those that are really interested in the biohacking neuroplasticity. She um, takes between, I think it's, there's two minute sessions and it's between six to 20 sessions. So that go for two minutes and you rewire your brain. So she also increases, I think it's the cortical thickness of the brain. Um, she increases dopamine levels, which even in her Parkinson's clients have been able to stop the shaking and really reduce it. But the difference wow. in some of her, yeah, it's incredible. The difference that you see with some of the autistic children she works with, they go from being very non-verbal and very sort of closed down into kind of being able to express themselves and you can see that the you know the pain of trying to express has really shifted and right. gone and that's been a couple of minutes whereas my journey through dyslexia and that was more of a two-year process so we have you know in terms of science um things are really cutting edge now so i encourage anyone that is interested in that to check out that interview I did with oh, her. Definitely. I will for sure. Um, I interviewed Michiko Hayashi from the Emoto Peace Project. And Dr. Emoto uh, was a scientist, a doctor that worked on proving that consciousness affects the water crystals, um, physical water crystals in their experiments with water crystals, love and gratitude are the highest 
frequencies for water crystals and they, they form these beautiful crystals. So would you like to talk about that? Okay, I, I'm lucky enough to have been given from Dr. Emoto's foundation. Um, a lovely man gave me some of the stickers. So we've actually got on our little water um, container, our water filter, some of the beautiful love and gratitude stickers, right. the water crystals. Um, but yeah, when we look into the body being 70% water um, and that changes, you know, um, when you're younger, it's a little bit more as we get older or with disease and illness, that water level starts to decline a little bit. So what I found through my research and where spirits kind of led me is to the plasma side of things and particularly more to do with like the water that we have that stems from the part of the brain called the choroidal plexus. So this is where our cerebrospinal fluid um, stems from. Oh, okay. if we, yeah, so there's a, a separation with the blood but there's a little bit of the plasma that's still left uh, in the water that's held within the body. Mm -hmm. So this water, um, you'll see babies when they're learning to crawl, right before they start to get into crawling stage, you'll see them rock back and forth. Right. And this is actually stim uh, stimulating the movement of cerebrospinal fluid to go oh, up into the brain. That's so yeah. interesting. It is. So from what I've sort of studied and researched, there's different types of water qualities. So with this cerebrospinal fluid having a little bit more of a plasma charge, when I look at the quality of water that we also drink, um, most of it's H2O, as you know, but there is plasma charged water that has biophoton energy from the sun. So we literally can take into ourselves this living sunlight. So there is more of a crystalline structure in H3O so to have H3O, we can consume this through um, fruits. So there's something that the fruit does when it's growing that actually creates more of a plasma charge in the water. And when we look at it on a structure level, it's more um, like a, a microcrystalline absorption into the cells that we see, whereas H2O is a big kind of globular thing mm -hmm. that doesn't really absorb. So we can essentially be chronically dehydrated. So um, some of the plasma um, H3O water is more in like your alkaline greens. So if you're doing like your green juice, things like that, it has not only chlorophyll, which is almost bioidentical to um, our hemoglobin in, uh, hemoglobin in blood. Uh, there's only one little structure with the iron and the chlorophyll that makes it different. So it's almost like 98%, I think, biocompatible with our blood and plant blood. So taking in these living light sources because the, the green on a photosynthesis level takes an energy from the sun and then turns it into chlorophyll, which we take in uh, to the body. So not only do we get better hydrated, we actually start to form more of that interaction with building our light body. So it's more important than ever that we start to consume right. these things as a way to kind of speed up this process of holding more light density. Right. Because yeah. I, I think for so, well, probably hundreds of years, except if you were in the Indian yogi uh, tradition, people were, were only thinking, they weren't thinking about the physical body as, as really the vehicle to embody the higher consciousness. And now it's right in our faces. We have to do the, the clearing and give the body what it needs. Yeah, definitely. And another way to get the H3O, you can do chia water. So chia seeds mixed with, um, I mean, ideally like natural spring water would be the best because um, that still has imprint. It still has uh, minerals and different things. Um, and there's so much, I guess, in our normal tap water that we know is just really not a drinkable right. source. Um, so yeah, it is good to research more into the H3O side of things. But when we look into this quality of cerebrospinal fluid within the water, there's a connection of what spirit shows me and was prompting me to research the sacred waters within. So we look at the water space within the womb and how this supports life and it's this protection or this kind of beautiful exchange between the mother and the child. But then if we move up and we look how the water kind of, um, you know, helps with Kundalini activation as well. So mm -hmm. there's a plasma. So when we look into plasma itself, it's one of the four fundamental things that uh, we're built up in, uh, in the universe. The plasma is, I guess, one of the larger things is plasma existing everywhere around us. Um, and we can kind of 
I guess, refer it to be like a plasma TV screen, but we have to put the program or the words behind it and create uh-huh. the reality of what we want to infuse into this plasma because it's it's kind of chaotically charged um, negative and positive ions. But if we put a program to it or an intention, we can actually get that Kundalini to activate up. Um, one of my favorite areas besides the pineal gland, which is a little crystal um, that we can activate that transduces information down from the quantum is the heart. So what's interesting, I guess, with the attack uh, in the modern day and age that we're seeing happen around heart issues and things, um, which I won't go into too much, but when I look to the pericardium, which is that beautiful fluid filled sac that surrounds and supports and protects the heart, this has this beautiful plasma water, this, um, yeah, cerebrospinal fluid that's around there in that fluid-filled sac. When we put that into gematria, um, we see like a whole list of different things where it talks about it being like, um, I can't remember the exact phrase, but it's pretty much like the gateway or the way to access God is through this heart, through this pericardium. So not just the heart, which is the electromagnetic right. muscle or kind of the battery to it, but if we can tap into the waters, which we know our consciousness connects to this, um, it's just, oops, I'm not sure if we've dropped out. Oh, we glitched out for oh, a sec. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if we can really put our intention, yeah, if we can put our intention around this beautiful height in this fluid and this water, you know, we're programming our reality because the heart has hurts. I think it's five, might be about 500 on a frequency scale. So it's one of the most electromagnetically charged um, organs in the body, even more so than the brain. Right, right. It's got a stronger electromagnetic field. And um, definitely uh, the heart center is the portal to our higher consciousness um, i just got goosebumps when you yeah. said that so true yeah. yeah um you had an, an important dream i watched your interview with honor it was the recent uh, youtube um interview on your channel which i recommend to everyone and it Thank was you. about timelines, multidimensionality, but you brought up this dream that you had, which I thought was really important because it also gave, it presented a potential problems, but it also pre- presented solutions. If you'd like to tell yeah. us about that. Yeah, so I think it was more fresh when I was talking about it. So I'm just tapping into the memory of it. Okay. And I remember th- a dream that I had just recently so hopefully this is the same dream but it was in this dream I saw all of these kind of like astral beings oh, and I was is that the same dream that I was talking right, about in that, that show that looked kind of like uh I forget like what sl- you call them slugs or yeah something. yeah so there was a couple of different ones and what I saw if we imagine I guess this to be the 3d physical reality I saw these entities existing more in the astral realm and in the dream it was taking place in a supermarket and I was noticing there was someone shopping I think it was the man and his mother anyway there was this big slug attached above his head just sort of circling around and I saw that it was infiltrating and projecting and working with his consciousness so it could manipulate um, I guess his consciousness to produce like certain things. But I also all of a sudden realized in the dream that he had all this purple on his face and was like a, almost like a skin condition. And in the dream, it's like, all of a sudden, I don't feel so well. And there was this feeling of, and I heard the words in the dream as well of his being infected. And it was to stay away, but it was so much to protect yourself on the astral realm from infiltration, from um, whether it was like arconic or negative demonic type energies, um, anything that existed on the lower astral um, frequency wise, it was to really like shield up and to watch out. But it also was showing as well that people that had taken certain concoctions, um, you know, might need to also put up that spiritual firewall and really kind of work with shifting the frequency or the energy that was linked with um, some of the, I guess, chemical compositions that are in those things too. That the 
<clears throat> the energies on, I guess, the astral, we're able to kind of tap in and use that as a conduit to hook into consciousness. So the way to combat it, and I really, I guess, don't go into sharing so much of like the negative. I'm always very solution based right. and what can right. we do and look towards, you know, positive timelines, positive outcomes. But it was so important from spirit to share that dream. So what it was, was up the level of protection, up the level of meditation, really start to shift and raise our frequency so that that is totally below and beneath mm -hmm. where it is that we're going. So it's to speak, <clears throat> funnily enough, my throat chakra feels like it's going, it's to speak the reality that we wish to see, that we wish to create. So it's anything that's going to anchor fourth and fifth and higher dimensional frequencies on the earth, which we know of energies just like the water crystals of love and gratitude. So mm -hmm. it really is changing and programming reality, not letting the, nav uh, the other narrative come in and shift it. And what I also link this to is um, like with CERN, um, you know, it did open some some portal energy that let through a lot of other beings. Um, so yeah, we do have the positive and the negative beings on earth, but it is about vibrating up out of those frequencies. There is a little exercise that, um, that I would love to share with people because some okay. people might be resonating or <clears throat> I guess realizing when this comes in um, that they need to sort of shift some things. Right. So sometimes this will be experienced through negative mindset or negative thought forms. So anytime that you get these sort of things come up, it's to be like, stop, like I'm in control of this world or right. I'm in control of this game in terms of your own reality. So mm -hmm. it's to reaffirm the positive which also links into what we call law of assumption and creating like your own kind of like self-concept and that being very, very strong, which is your firewall essentially to the quantum and to the astral, making sure that, you know, you are sort of that sovereign being of light. So one way that I love to kind of throw off anything that's of a lower vibrational or negative influence uh -huh. is frequency shift. So it's really closing your eyes and getting a sense of, is there a color that I'm seeing my spirit energy or soul energy um, right now. And then what you'll do, sometimes you might see a shape come up and then what it is, is just changing and altering that. So seeing something that's about two octaves at least above. So you might be going from, you know, like a green to a purple, or it might come up as a shape or a flower. As long as we're changing the vibrational pattern of it, what we're essentially doing is, if we look at it to represent the internet or we look at it to represent um, an IP address, we're actually changing the IP address. So we're, ma we're making sure that the firewall comes back up, that we're, un I guess, unhooking anything that's not supposed to be there. So we're doing pretty much like a virus sweep or a purge when we shift into this high vibrational frequency. Yeah, I like it. Oh, good. Um it's just important for people uh, when we're bombarded in society nowadays with so much negativity. If you watch the news or or mm -hmm. listen to anything um, on media and so much on social media, that um, you think about the energy that you're taking in. Your feet we're energetic beings. And we're yeah. feeding ourselves, whether it's positive or negative, we're implanting these energies into ourselves. And so um, it's, I think it's important to really check ourselves to see if we're resonating a lot with fear because, uh, yeah. yeah. And I even noticed the other day, my partner and I were looking to go to a movie last night and more than half the movies that were available to watch at the cinema were horror movies. Wow. And we're both into horror because like you really feel that energy try and come in. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, isn't that fascinating? And I know it's October that, you know, we have Halloween coming right. up, but I'm just thinking this is really, you know, more than half. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it is, it's hard to find a, a, a good movie nowadays to watch. It is. Can did you want to talk to us about these teas that you're um, experimenting with? Now you um, you are very in tune with the plants themselves, correct? And it, have yeah. you sourced some of the um, plants that you're gonna you know uh, 
talk to us about that, how you source <laughs> the plants for your teas. Yeah, so it was really kind of filling into the, and the way the concept came about was I was going through a breakup and it was really, I was making myself what I was calling heart healing tea. And so drinking the tea with the intention of, you know, my heart feeling healed and feeling that, you know, I was sort of calling back those parts of myself and really coming up into another frequency to kind of not only heal the heart, but to birth that new version of self. Um, and so with that, I was putting the crystals and the salts and the oils in the bath as well, and kind of doing this full immersed alchemy as well as drinking uh -huh. the potion. So the name Soul Alchemy Potions came about. And with that, Spirit was talking about designing a range of teas to help with not only like setting our intention, but kind of creating uh -huh. a rule or manifestation around working with um, herbs and, and plants or plant medicine as like an alchemy, uh, like a spiritual alchemy uh, process. So one of my favorites is the love potion tea, which is not only to work with like self-love, but it's also about like calling more love in. It's got um, rose in it and cinnamon, cardamom, so like really warming, stimulating um, heart chakra venous energies. So it really is also working with like planetary medicine uh, and it's also got cacao nibs. So there's like that chocolatey aspect that's Ooh. just there very subtly but we all know like you know with chocolate how healing it can feel sometimes and how it lifts um the uh, dopamine and things in the brain as well so yeah there's other ones like abundance tea um cleansing vibes uh i am that witch which is pretty much like also <laughs> coming into full power queen of wands high priestess energy uh -huh. um one of my favorites would probably be vision quest which is a tea that actually changes color so it wow. looks like a potion. So you start out with this blue tea and there's a little secret ingredient that, um, you know, when you buy the tea, you're told like to mix this one extra part and it turns into this beautiful pinky kind of violet energy right in front of your eyes. Wow. So yeah, also setting up a podcast um, around this because it really is to empower people right. to bring the magic back into their hands, but also create that self-awareness that, you know, we do get to choose things for ourselves. We're not kind of just bumping along right. the way, flying into things. So it'll really be more of like, I, I guess, um, you know, creating our experience, creating our own reality will be tied in with this. So there'll also be other people that will join in various friends of mine uh, that are coaches or, you know, um, uh, health specialists uh, or even, you know, spiritual advisors, people like this. And um, so when do you have a date when you might launch that, you might make it available? So I've got a production company. We're just tweaking a couple of the, um, I think there's three T's that we're uh, just getting the final tweaks on at the moment. So hoping to launch it before the end of the year. I've got a girl creating the website and everything as well. So fingers crossed it comes oh, out for <laughs> the end of the year. But yeah, it really is working with, the intention and this is really to kind of you know when we talk about the crystals of love and gratitude this right. is really holding the tea programming it with the intention then we're drinking uh -huh. the intention of the reality we're calling in right. so oh. we also give information on what planets to work with for what you're creating so it's kind of making a little magical ritual of it but really working with alchemy and planetary medicine that that that's exciting and it you is. also have uh, your course you're working on. You are a busy woman. Yeah, yeah, and and a mother as well. So there's lots of <laughs> lots of time, you know, going into everything at the moment. But the course is very exciting. It really it stemmed out of that need to, I guess, you know, growing up without anyone to really guide me in that. Uh -huh. To so it's kind of my life's work and my heart energy that's gone into this course. And it really is ways that have worked for me to help connect and to make sense of, you know, activating and working with the psychic senses. But because I've got a strong background in anatomy and physiology and spiritual mm -hmm. anatomy, I really break down like how the brain works and the crystals that are within the center of the brain mm -hmm. and within the ears, the acupuncture points and really take people through how to open this spiritual gateway. This is, this is fabulous. You know, um, you also mentioned in that interview I watched that you had had a vision about a higher 
dimensional or higher consciousness education for children. And yeah. I was, I've also been given a vision of this higher consciousness education for children. And, and um, would you talk about your vision about the, the yeah. education in the future for our children? Yeah. So this is, I guess, it's on that timeline of when we come into, you know, more sort of like being empowered and not being controlled by fear. So it is that positive timeline of where we have that sovereignty and we really sort of come into this peaceful time within ourselves. So that's when I'm seeing like more ET communication on a positive contact level happen. And I actually had a vision of a, a swirling blue portal that opened um, with a being sitting in front and there was like a little mat outside in nature and all these children sitting there learning about the true history and about the true nature of who, uh, who humanity is. So I feel that we've really been dumbed down and told that we only use 10% of our brain, that we originate from, um, you know, monkeys, things right. like this. Yeah. When we look to, um, you know, some of the beautiful um, Aboriginal uh, culture here in Australia, we're told that we actually were seated and come from the Pleiades. Mm -hmm. So a lot of their stories, and it's the same in Maori culture and, you know, in Hawaii and different places mm -hmm. um, and other islander cultures, they talk about that we come from Pleiades. So, right. yeah, I, I really sort of see those teachers coming back to be like, well, actually, this is how you work with, like, um, you know, your psychic senses. So it's almost getting back to a little bit how we worked in Lemuria, you know, being able to communicate, talk with animals, talk with plants. And we're starting to see examples of that show up. So one of the beautiful elders here, Auntie Minnie Mace, she predicted the whole change, I'll call it the change, that we've seen on the planet the last couple of years. And she said that it will be, we, we will know that we're in the shift with the shortage of toilet paper. And I think she <laughs> predicted that Two, two years before anything oh, wow. happened with the, the second wave of it, she said, same thing. It will be predicted by toilet paper. By the time, like she sort of said about the third, what she said to watch for is the shift in the birds. So she said, oh. when the birds start acting funny, we'll know that something's up. And so we're having that over here. And because I'm, I guess, really tapped into collective consciousness reading for mm -hmm. my clients um, full time, they're having the same thing happen where, you know, they're walking through a park and birds aren't flying off anymore. Even my father experienced a, a kookaburra, which are our laughing birds, just sit on the fence right behind his shoulder. So he's like taking a selfie <laughs> with this kookaburra. And, you know, he even got so up close that he could pat uh, the bird. And they're not the type of birds that, that we can really get close to in that way. Right. So I, I had a magpie come up like right to me. I'm like, what does it want? I feel like it's wanting to communicate something. And I was able to, um, you know, feed it right out of my hand. So we're seeing like many different animal signs, but also there's a consciousness overlay to do with that split from the third and fourth dimension that happened a long, long time ago. There was a veil that fell down. So we forgot that we could communicate with animals or that we were connected with the fairy realms, all these things. And it's as if that curtain's been lifted and all of a sudden we're connecting consciousness to consciousness with these animals and able to speak heart to heart. Because when I've worked with animal communication, it's always when we drop into our heart that they will take notice. So even when um, my kids were young and we were going to the zoo, I mean, we don't go to the zoo anymore because it's a really sad experience. Right. Um, you know, we would drop into our hearts and the elephants would just come right up to us. They'd be in the paddock doing their own thing. So we can speed up this process by dropping into this heart space uh -huh. and connecting animals in this way. But you're starting to see little personalities or um, an etheric overlay. You can almost see like a human aspect to some of the birds and things here now. So it's really exciting times that we're in. It is. It is. Uh, I... I'm really excited to, um, I don't know how it's going to happen. I just know, you know, that that's going to happen, that someday the children are just going to have a fabulous education where they learn about true human nature and how to work mm -hmm. with their, the energies and the natural world around us. And, and that's yeah. what I saw. I saw heaven on earth. So I'm, I'm pressing my fingers, you know, that... It'll happen when I'm still here. 
And I, I think that's why you and I have been, you know, pressed from spirit to share these experiences, these conversations, because it does ripple out into collective consciousness. And I know through, you know, working with my clients, a lot of them are getting similar downloads. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's this magical ingredient that's getting poured into this soup of our consciousness. We are going through that transformation phase into, um, you know, the age of Aquarius as well, which uh -huh. to me, if I was to pick a card that it relates to in the tarot, it's the star card. This is our true galactic heritage oh, wow. and yeah. nature mm -hmm. and consciousness. And she's the conduit between the heavens and the stars and bringing in that back, that information, that knowledge and sacred connection onto the earth. She represents hope. And I think that that's what, you know, we need to hold brightest um, right now is that right. love, that hope energy. And to know that while we're being broadcast other things, we can actually switch off to that and go, no, I choose this to be my reality. Right. So I call it you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly what um, I got a meditation within this week is that oh. when I had, you know, I'm human, I had some fear and some insecurities come up over a particular issue and when I meditated on it they said every time uh, that thought comes in reject it yeah. continue to hold my frequency of love you know just just don't accept anything less into um you know my field and and it and I'm not being a Pollyanna looking through rose-colored glasses, but I tell you, it works. So I, I definitely yeah. recommend it. <laughs> and I can relate that to, I guess, part of our anatomy in the brain too, to give it like a little bit of the scientific side. So I've been working with the yeah. same thing and spirits being the same, the same, just, you know, reject it. Mm -hmm. So if we looked at the amygdala part of the brain, this is that old caveman part that sort of is yeah. like, don't go out of the you know there might be the mountain lion there and so we sort of react from past fear and that whereas where we're shifting to right now it's a whole new creative reality we're stepping into so we need to be that you know god that sort of says okay brain well that might be the situation from the past but this is what i'm creating from the future and when you actually address it and you you know reject it it switches off the part of the brain because it's just an old ancient part of the brain that's trying to alert us to danger um, or that fight or flight type energy. So as soon as we calm it and we address it, it's like, oh, okay, I'll go back to sleep then. So <laughs> definitely reject, you know, those other feelings. Yeah. And that's a great perspective because I didn't think about it. I was just uh, following my inner guidance, not knowing, you know, what was really happening, but it did work. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And I think more of us that work and operate in this, and I think some of the beautiful collective meditations we've seen around the, mm -hmm. um, the realm the last couple of years too, it, it's just, yeah, it's inspiring to see people come together and even, you know, your beautiful audience as well coming together to watch um, even just this topic, you know, it sort of sparks that beautiful spark that they go carry that light to other places. Right. And I, I'm so grateful to have you on here with me. Um, I was wondering if you would mind pulling a few cards to just give us a little update of the current energies. Yeah, let's have a look into it. So I'm just using the um, soft deck today. Um, the way that I read is a little bit different to um, other readers in that I love to pull the cards blind and feel into the frequency and download from spirit what they're saying. So we'll pick some cards and then we'll flip them over when spirit says. So I'm just hearing them say the word. It's like a collective pulse is what we're doing. Or I love it. Looking yeah. Okay. Okay, so they're giving me four cards and I'll just show you guys. So I've got this just on my desk. So we've got just the four cards here. Hopefully you can see them. And what I do, I just feel in and run my hand along the energy and I'll just do that. So what's interesting is I'm seeing this beautiful flow or this beautiful like river of energy coming through from the left. There's gold with pink. When spirit shows me gold and pink, mm -hmm. this is connected to the divine feminine. So they're really encouraging us to, and it's interesting because they're showing it here 
So it is those two octaves, like we were saying before, it's like to rise above, to connect. So if we are in like a lower river or current of like fear or, you know, the aggression and anger sort of astral energies and um, mental energies and emotional energies at the moment, it's like to step up and release. So it's to connect to beautiful beings that connect with divine unconditional love, uh, Mary Magdalene, Kuan Yin, Hathor, Isis, um, the beautiful divine feminine that we see as those mother kind of representatives. Mm -hmm. So what else we get come up? The other thing that I'm also seeing is like a halt or kind of like a little bit of a, it's like, as soon as we try and tap in or connect to that, we're always going to get that little test or challenge pop up. I'm just trying to decode the symbol that I'm seeing. It's like a wheel is the energy spirit sort of showing. And I feel like this wheel is sort of trying to stop. And then I'm seeing something totally new on the other side. It's almost like there's a, a portal or something. And then I'm seeing a whole, it feels like a new frequency or a new um, reality. So it's like this flow of energy and things. And it's, I'm hearing them say a neutral point, but what they're sort of showing is like a blank slate or kind of a reality that's not built yet. Say if we're drawing like in, I guess like an art program or we're filling in the details, I'm seeing a world that's not finished being created, I guess is the way that they're trying to show me. So we sort of know what's happening in the here and now, but they're talking about, we need the artists, we need the creatives, we need the musicians, we need all of the beautiful, in, uh, like inspirational souls to come in and fill this space up to build it out um, I've not been shown this before so I'm just viewing this at first time too I've seen like visions of utopia and things but the message that's coming through really strong is we need those creative souls and I think a lot of the creative souls have found it hard in the 3D earth reality experience yeah. that you know on a financial level as well sometimes it's been a struggle with their art or with their dance or with their music whereas it's actually one of the important creative aspects um so this is total venus energy because venus governs art music creativity so i would say it's about like letting that heart flow and creativity run wild but visualize like creating this new um beautiful earth shift so i'll flip the cards over um this is it's so intriguing. Okay, so where I talked about there being like a disc or kind of like a circle, we have the energy of completion. So there's that disc, oh, that circle. Uh -huh. um, so it's just the world card in this particular deck. It's called the universe. So we can see here that she has um, got all this higher energy coming in. And there's a Kundalini expansiveness that's taking place with this snake. She's still trying to control it and... Um, you know, and work with it in that way. This is so, it's so in, intriguing. Um, so right down here on the bottom, I get really excited when spirit tells oh. me a message that it shows up. See how this mansion yeah. is built in the etheric, yet it's not fully concrete. So we're closing off from one reality and we're actually building this other future reality. So this is where we need the artist. We need everyone to come in that is a creative um and it's not to feel that it has to be perfect. It's the feeling of it that they're trying to convey. So the other cards that we got are what I call my veil card. So where I described before about a veil coming down between third and fourth dimension, and now we're lifting it up again. Mm -hmm. It's been a really long battle, but mm -hmm. there's new things that are coming through of where we're like, wow, there is like a little bit of change coming, a bit of movement on earth realm. This has been... I actually call this the JAB card and I'm just going to talk in code because I know right. we have different things that like to pick up on certain words. Um, the other name of this card is the card of cruelty. So nine of swords is actually where there's a heavy veil of depressive energies and fear and that that really is trying to weigh heavily on the hearts and minds of humanity. So with the nine of swords, it's that energy in traditional tarot that a person is sitting up in bed at night with their head in their hands and they're really like, I can't tolerate or I can't stand this anymore. So it is kind of getting into this um, energy of pushing back and creating the reality that we wish to see in the world. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's Mars energy, which we know is also um, war-like energy. Um, it's Gemini too. 
So if we don't have control over our thoughts, because Gemini works with Mercury, so it's, you know, it's the mind on where this infiltration has taken place. So we need to work with that energy of the heart and the energy of Venus, which is the opposite of Mars, this energy to create this new reality. So I'll just get some clarification from this other deck. Um, is that all making sense so far? It April? seems like the whole theme of our conversation, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and that's the way that I love the synchronicity through spirit in that, you know, we can talk about it, but when it shows up in the cards and especially when we're reading the energy of it first and we flip them over and it's saying the same thing, mm -hmm. I love that information for the human aspect of us that, you know, spirit knows and sees and, and trusts, but yeah. our human part is like, no, I need, I need to see it. Yeah. Um, so I'm just getting clarification. These, um, this is the right away, Tara. I do just flip these over. I work very differently with it. So I'm just asking for them to give us a little bit more information. Okay. And this is fascinating. So many are still kind of like held in the bondage um, right. of the mind prison, essentially. This is also a butterfly in a chrysalis going, I know that I have wings that are forming. I know that I know how to break free. Um, it is more of like a mercury energy again. Um, and with the eight, it's this plateau, it's this stuck energy, but it's all an illusion. So it is kind of like stretching outside to a new version of reality. So I always see the eight of swords in that we're stuck from trying to find a solution from the same energy that was used to create it. So it really is tapping into Venus energy, getting this new slack energy come down into our realm. Um, we also have the um, seven of wands, which is the card of valor and spiritual strength. So this is also a message for those that have been fighting this fight on a spiritual level to keep going. It's like, we're almost there, keep going. We also have the card of judgment. This is also known as the card of the woken undead. We see Archangel Michael with the trumpet trying to wake up these people um, and to, to kind of wake up to the realness of this matrix, this simulated reality. Mm -hmm. This is also, um, these people are the woken undead. So we actually see them standing in little coffins. So the kind of more, what we would say is like the zombie apocalypse side of things <laughs> or like yeah. the the people that don't have full control over their mental mind and they're led more by fear or right. more by, sort of, I guess we would call it like the blue pilled. Um, so yeah, they're still waiting. But the thing is with this energy, we can't force anyone to come into that wakefulness or to come into this new reality. Each person has a certain timeline or a certain need to have that dark dream spell be over them. So it really is, you, we can share information with people, right. we can say things, but unless it's their time, we can't force that right. uh, that egg to hatch. Um, we also have five of wands, which is, um, it's Saturn's energy mixed with Leo, um, which is the resistance. It's Saturn coming in to constrict, to control, to tell us what we have to do. And that Leo energy is like fighting up in us. It's that spiritual warrior wanting to fight, to break free from a fire. So five's kind of like restriction, a plateau, a stuck um, thing. As soon as we realize that we don't actually need to get into this fight, we don't need to kind of resist. And of course we will have to sort of, I guess, if things are to be forced on us, state our sovereignty and things. I'll just see what, what they recommend. Oh, okay. What's interesting is we do see that there are others behind the scenes. So I've got King of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, which is in alignment with sort of like, you know, God's plan and everything, and Ten of Cups, Wishes Fulfilled, which is happy families. It's an energy of safety. Mm -hmm. It's the programmed um, experience that we're talking about filling up that's yet to be created. So right. highly, highly important that we focus on that and not on the swords, not on the other, um, right. you know, mental imprisonment. So, yeah. That's great. I, I definitely, um, uh, the last thing I had written, and I really didn't know why, but I had just put love, laughter, joy, fun, you know, to uplift ourselves and everyone. You know, it's important that we don't forget about that, to bring that be those beautiful high energies into our daily life. I think so too. And I think that, you know, those frequencies are really high 
when we look at them on you know a scale of frequency so all of those things are going to help tip us further to that positive reality um but yeah definitely in your meditations your visualization start creating that vision start filling it out and painting it in the sky in the in the earth um yeah that's really beautiful the words that you've written well i so appreciate you coming on and i'd love to get you on um on a regular basis so that we can oh. check in with, you know, with the way things are changing. There's so many new that. downloads and things going on. I would love to have you come back and, um, you know, just continue our conversation. I would love that, April. And you feel like family as well. So it feels perfect. Um, we and I've got a I've got a special code that I forgot to share. So oh. for anyone watching that wanted to book a two-hour session, which was really my quantum jump session, uh, where we get to look into multiple different areas and look at what's sort of holding us stuck and kind of, you know, shoot for the stars. Um, if they use the code word galactic in any of my two-hour sessions, whether it's personal one or whether it's, um, you know, a couple session, they're able to get a discount using all caps saying galactic. Wonderful. And um, I, I'm so appreciative of that. I, I hope everyone takes advantage because I can say from personal experience that your readings are phenomenal. Uh, thank you so much. It's just been beautiful to, to have this conversation with you. Yeah. Okay, my beautiful sister. <laughs> I love you. I appreciate you. you and keep up all the wonderful work and we'll uh, see you soon, I hope. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching as well. Bye. Alrighty, bye.